I'd like to share with you an introduction to the latter part of 1 John chapter 3. This chapter is uh, very important because in verse 16, it defines love for us. There's several times in the book of 1 John that love is defined. And uh, in 1 John 3, verse 16, it says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one, one another, for our brothers and sisters. And so I've entitled this lesson, Love Practically. And uh, love needs flesh on it. We need to uh, put some skin in the game and we need to be able to love and serve uh, through our actions and through our deeds. And uh, it's interesting, this uh, section of uh, 1 John 3, it, beginning in verse 11, warns us to be like Abel and not like Cain. Cain did not love his brother and he eventually murdered him. And so we need to be like Abel who loved God and loved his brother. So it says in uh, 1 John 3, 11 and 12, for this is the message we've heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Do not be like Cain who belong uh, to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. So there's a profound truth there that uh, when you're righteous, you can love. But when you're unrighteous, you don't have that ability to love. And so the discussion question for that verse, those two verses is, is there any one difficult in your life right now to love and why? Is there anyone difficult for you to love and why? And it seems like uh, there's always someone in our life that makes it challenging for us. But maybe that person is there so we can grow in love. And it goes on in that uh, because Christians can love, the world resents us and hates us. There's an attitude towards Christians by people that don't have the ability, ability to love. It says in 1 John 3, 13 through 15, Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother or sister is a murderer. Pretty strong language, extreme language. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in them. And then he defines love, as I've mentioned. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And so we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. And so we need to love like Jesus. That's what 1 John uh, tells us throughout this uh, whole book. But also the Apostle John said the same thing in John 13, 34, and 35. Love as I have loved. You know, love one another. And so the question for uh, this definition is, of love is, how do you define love in a practical way? How do you feel loved? How do you show love? What makes you feel like someone loves you? And how do you try to make others feel loved? So how do you love practically? You know, I was drawn to this church because uh, that I'm a part of in the fellowship that I love because I felt like people really lived out the scriptures. They didn't just uh, believe them or speak about them or learn about them, but they really lived it and showed me how to live as a Christian, showed me how to live for Christ. And so we need to be a fellowship of love. It says in 1 John 3, 17 and 18, and if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother or sister in need, but uh, has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Words are cheap. People can say things. There are smooth talkers out there, but actions prove what we really believe and prove uh, how we really think. And so uh, I uh, look for people's actions. And, and so this scripture is challenging us to love practically to love with action and truth, to behave in a loving way, and to serve in a way that shows our love.
And then we can be confident before God. It's getting ready to say that Satan accuses us and takes away our confidence. It tries to shake our faith and tries to condemn us and shame us. But the way that we overcome that shaming by Satan is reminding ourselves that we have the ability to love, that we have good hearts. We have good hearts and it's proven by our ability to love. If you can love, you have a good heart. And that's what this verse is about to say in 1 John 3, uh, 19 through 22. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at uh, rest in his presence. For our hearts, when our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And so the question is, the discussion question is, how does Satan accuse you and what lies does he tell you? We've got to not believe and not listen to Satan's lies. We're good hearted if we can love other people. And if we do what God commands and we're trying to please God, it says that he'll answer our prayers in verse 22 there. And he goes on and and, and he, he reiterates this confidence we can have in prayer in 1 John 3, 22 through 23. He says, we receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and we do what pleases him. And this is his command to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. And so we can pray in faith and know that God hears us and that God will answer our prayers according to his will uh, because we are trying to love and we're trying to keep God's commands and trying to, to please him. And he goes on and says that we can have confidence in our salvation, not just that our prayers are heard, but we can be confident of our salvation. In 1 John 3 uh, and verse 24, it says, the one who keeps God's command live, lives in him, God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit that he gave us. And the spirit is our paraclete, our comforter, the one that's walking along beside us. And in Romans 8 and verse 26, it says, in the same way the spirit helps us, in our weaknesses, we do not know how we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And uh, so uh, we can be confident of our salvation. So especially because we you know that God answers, hears our prayers and he answers them. And so the last question is, what prayers or prayer or prayers has God answered in your life lately? That builds our faith. Let's end on that question. What prayer or prayers has God answered in your life lately? Thank you so much for your uh, interest in 1 John and may these words, and may, may this chapter, may this inspired text encourage you. God bless you.